Okay, let's talk about the electric field around conductors. And there's several ideas that are kind of cool about conductors. And thank you. Um, now, let's, let's think about the physics of this first um, before we get into the math. Let's suppose I have some charge over here, some isolated charge way over here, and then way over here somewhere I've got negative charge. And let's say that, you know, this creates some kind of electric field between them, right? You know, that might have some curve on it. But, you know, electric field lines, this, this is what causes electric fields and if you have an electrostatic condition. is you know, charges isolated from each other. So that if you're a positive test charge, you're right there, you're going to feel a force that's going to push you along. That's what electric field means. Electric fields apply forces to objects that have charge. Okay, so... But what if I took this electric field and inside it I put a conducting material? Now what does it mean that when I say an object is a conductor, like a metal? Let's say metals. Well, metals have, are made out of atoms, just like just about everything else, except for dark matter, which is most of the universe, but that's a whole different story. All right. Um, so here's this, let's say this represents the nucleus. Each little dot represents the nucleus of um, one of the metal atoms. And maybe it's, uh, it could be copper, gold, aluminum, whatever. Well, if you remember something about uh, a metal, it has valence electrons and each atom has a valence electron. Now remember what that valence electron is. A valence electron is that electron that's held out you know farthest away from the nucleus of the atom and in a metal all the atoms kind of share those valence electrons they're not held by each individual atom that's what makes it a metal is that the electrons are free to move in fact if there was no electric field there these electrons just just buzz around these valence electrons, not the ones inside on the inner energy levels, but on the outer energy level, they just go around. Um, and. Is that a whole sea of electrons? What is it? A sea of electrons, yes, you can think of it that way. It's almost like a fluid in a way. Now, um, the. And, and this is what gives metals. The ability to conduct electricity, right? I mean, these th there's charge in there that's free to move around if you push on them. Um, it also is kind of like the, the attraction between these valence electrons and the protons in the nucleus uh, is what holds metals together, but it also lets you pound metals. Like you, metal is very malleable. You can pound on it, and especially something like gold, you can pound it into a a leaf that's very, very, very thin, only a few atoms thick. It also uh, uh, allows uh, atoms or uh, metals to interact with photons in such a way that when the photons bounce off, uh, they, they reflect very nicely and it makes the metal shiny. So it can conduct electricity, it can be stretched, it can be pounded, it's, it's uh, duct ductility, uh, malleability, all these different properties of metals. Are, are because these electrons are free to move. But here's what I want to emphasize. Right now we are dealing with what's called an electrostatic condition. And an electrostatic condition it, static, electrostatic condition well what does the word static mean? It means, it means nothing's moving anymore okay everything's stopped well think about what's going to happen when i apply an electric field inside this conductor am i going to have an electrostatic condition and the answer is no 
because see this electric field right here it's going to apply a force to all the charges that are inside now the protons and the electrons on the inner energy levels are trapped they, they don't move but the valence electrons are free to move and what happens is that these valence electrons start moving this way right under the influence of this electric field well if there's a net flow of charge we don't have an electrostatic condition okay but if we wait just a little while not very long at all maybe a few billionths of a second these valence electrons will build up on the outside here so we're going to end up with negative charge on this surface over here in fact they build up to the point where the amount of charge here will be the same as the amount of charge over here and what will happen is the electric field will terminate remember electric fields start at positive charge but terminate at negative charge see so the electric field will terminate there And then now what happens on the interior here? Well, think about like this. If I've, I'm an electron and I move this way, well, that leaves a net positive charge over here. Well, what does that net positive charge do? Well, it attracts the next electron over to go that way, which it causes the next valence electron to go this way until you reach the edge of the metal. And now there's no more. So we're going to borrow this electron and put it over here leaving a net positive charge on the outside. So what happens is this. If you let this thing settle down, like you apply an electric field across this metal, if you wait just a little tiny bit of time, it doesn't take much time at all, what will happen is that negative charge will flow to this edge leaving a net positive charge over here everything will kind of settle out and there is absolutely no electric field inside a conductor now here's a big idea if you have an electrostatic condition then the electric field inside a conductor must be equal to zero. There can be no electric field inside a conductor if you have an electrostatic condition. Because if you did have an electric field inside the conducting material, it would force valence electrons to flow. And if you have flowing charge, well, we call that a current. And if you have a current, you don't have an electrostatic condition. So if you have this, then this must be true inside a conductor. Which means you can have no net charge inside a conductor. You can have a net charge on the outside of a conductor but you can't have any um, net charge uh, within the interior of a conducting material. And what is a, a bar of gold? If you put a net charge on a bar of gold, that net charge is all on the surface. It's n n none of the net charge will be inside. Because if you did put a net charge inside, that would create an electric field inside, which would push charges around and arrange it so that all the net charge will be on the outside. Yes? Is that why, wait, is it, so this is for running current through a conducting material, right? No, no. no. Well, it w if you apply a, an electric field inside a conductor, okay. it will force a current to flow. Okay. But if there's a current flowing, we don't have an electrostatic condition. And what we're dealing with right now specifically is let's look at a situation where we have a conducting material that has a net charge on it but we have an electrostatic condition if all of that is true then there then all of the charge has to be on the surface of the conductor okay so is that why conducting materials like wires can be so small and so on the surface instead of the inside 
Well, um, in electrical applications, like when we turn lights on and off and, you know, circuits and stuff, there is no net charge within the circuit. It's a, the, the, the wires and stuff are all electrically neutral. That's a totally different situation than what we're dealing with right here. Okay. Yes? If you were to move the electric field, would the um, conductor go back to the same state it was before? If you remove the electric field, yeah, if I took these charges away, yeah, these negative charges, well, what will happen is the valence electrons will go back to, the, and it will, it'll be. Now, think about it this way. What's the net charge on this conductor that I placed in here? The net charge on here is zero, because there's just as much negative over here as positive over here. Okay, but I could have, let's say um, I had a, a sphere of metal, a sphere of pure metal. And let's say for a, a moment I did put net positive charge throughout the interior of this. Well, what's going to happen? They're going to apply electric fields. Well, what will happen is that, you know, think about these valence electrons. They're going to be driven uh, to the interior by these electric fields. And so you don't have an electrostatic condition because there's net flow of charge inside. What you'll end up with when you end up with an electrostatic condition, all the charge that I drew out here will very quickly, it takes very little time, we'll, we'll move to the, and this is a cross section of the sphere, we'll move to the outside. It has to. Okay, now what are the implications of this? Well, first of all, um, if I do have a sphere, I can use Gauss's law and you know draw a Gaussian surface inside. Well, there's no charge inside there. So again, there's no electric field. Um, if I'm on the outside, it looks like a point charge. Um, and we're running out of time, but I, I do want to talk about one more thing and that is what is the electric field on the uh, out just outside the surface of a conductor okay so uh, what is the electric field just outside okay so here's a conducting surface all right a conducting material so here's the conducting material inside here so this is pure gold yeah and let's say that let's deposit a net charge on this. So let's say somehow we put a positive charge on the, and this is a this is a cross section. Well, there's a couple of interesting things here. There can be no electric field inside. If I have an electrostatic condition, there can be no electric field inside. Okay? So all the electric field comes off like this. By the way, how did I draw these electric field lines compared to the surface? They have to be perpendicular. Now why would they have to be perpendicular? Stop and think. What if I had an electric field line that was at an angle? Let's, let, me, let me draw another surface. Well, let's, let's say that I, I drew them parallel, so they're not actually crossing each other. That's not why. Here's my electric field, and here's my positive charges on the surface. Well, what would happen here? Look at the electric field. It's, it's applying a force to these charges. Now, it's very difficult to completely pull charge off the metal. You can do it with an electric spark, but then we don't have an electrostatic condition, do we, if we have an electric spark? So... But look, let's take a look at the force on here. I've got a force that's perpendic that's uh, parallel to the surface and normal to the surface. Well, if there's a component of this electric force on this charge that's parallel to the surface, well, that charge is free to move. It's a conducting material. The charge is free to move. And so what will happen is that if the electric field has a component that's parallel to the surface, it will create a current on that surface. And if there's a current, 
you don't have an electrostatic condition. And so, therefore, if we have an electrostatic condition, and that's what we deal with here when we're dealing with Gauss's law, then two things are true. The electric field comes off, you know, off the outside, it, it doesn't exist on the interior, and it comes off perpendicular to the surface. Well, now I can apply Gauss's law to figure out what is the strength of the electric field just off the surface of this conductor. I'm gonna use Gauss's law. Here's my Gaussian surface. So here's my A. That's the area that has charge on it. Let's say this has a charge density of sigma. That's how much charge per unit area there is. And if I apply Gauss's law, E dot dA is equal to the charge enclosed over epsilon naught. Well, E, now how much area, if this is A right here, that means this is A right here, that means this is A right here. How much area has electric flux going through it? Only the top one. The bottom one isn't included anymore, unlike the example I did you know, earlier. Which means that this is E times A. This is the area here that has electric flux penetrating through it. Also, how much charge is enclosed? Well, the charge, the area charge density times the area it gives me the charge enclosed sigma A. Sorry about this. A cancels and the electric field in uh, just off the surface of a conductor turns out to be equal. The magnitude of it is the charge, area charge density divided by epsilon naught. Instead of divided by two epsilon naught, it's just epsilon naught. And there you go.